By the way, I'm oh, sorry, did you start? No, no, go ahead. I was going to oh, Okay, so just like with uh, what we normally do, just you can look at me still, but also at occasion just kind of look at the, the camera with everything. Okay. And yeah. Okay. All right, Andrew, ready? Yep. All right. I'll get us started in three, two. Welcome here on the campus of Holy Cross College here in Notre Dame, Indiana. Glad you could join us for Holy Cross Men's Soccer Media Day here in Notre Dame. Women's soccer. No, men first. You're good. I thought it was ladies first. That was my bad. Just because okay. we did the men yesterday and get so that and everything. Good thing it's not live. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> All right. All right. Take two and go in. in. No, good. In three, two. We welcome you to Holy Cross College here in Notre Dame, Indiana. My name is Tanner Cape. I'm glad you could join us here for Holy Cross Men's Soccer Media Day here on the Regional Radio Sports Network. Be sure to check out all of our Saints men's coverage here on rrsn.com and on our Facebook as well. And to my left here, have the pleasure of chatting with Omar Gal, the head coach and coach last season. I would put an argument that it might go down as the best season that the Holy Cross men have had since his existence. I mean, we just take a look back on last year. Ten wins five losses, four ties, and for the first time in program history, you guys got to host in the postseason CCAC match and getting that 3 nothing win over Judson before falling short in double overtime to the always powerful Olivet Nazarene. Just take us back through last season and what that meant because there were a lot of other things that happened. October didn't lose a match. Either it was either a tie or a win, including a really great contest in Bourbon A against Olivet Nazarene. So just tell us a little bit and recap on last season and the success that you guys had. Yeah, uh, you know, it, it, first and foremost, it, it starts with the leadership of our program. And I think um, Martin, Kamoy, and Gabe have done a tremendous job of just setting a standard, not only on the field, but more importantly, off the field. And, right, and that's where it all starts in the classroom, in the community. And these guys are very active. And it just sets a standard of excellence of what we're trying to accomplish. Um, yeah, very successful season. Um, what I appreciate the most, honestly, is the level of competition in training. Right. And I think that's where especially Kamoy, Martin and Gabe, they set the standard of our sessions, our practices have to be tougher than our games. Like our our subs, anybody that they're going against, you know, our starters are going against in preparation for the game. Those reserves have to prep our starters for each match. Right. And I think that's what transpired the entire season, which allowed us to be consistent in our play. Let's take a look at those three players, and we had the, uh, I had the fortune of getting to talk to them, which, by the way, not only are they just outstanding soccer players, they're just outstanding young men that any coach would be happy to have represent your program, both on the field and in the classroom. And I tell you what, again, Kamoy Creary always has something to say every time we, we step on and get ready for our broadcast. Martin Fontoon, of course, he's been outstanding. First ever All-American in Holy Cross men's soccer history. And Gabe Yanka, again, another player that really represents what it means to be a captain for your team. Just tell us a little bit about those three players and when you first recruited them to where they are at this point in their careers and the growth that they have made during their time as a Saint. Yeah, you know, Tanner, I mean, as coaches, we're very competitive. We want to win every game. But, to, you know, for every coach, it should be, you know, winning a championship is seeing your players grow and who they become off the field, off the field, sorry, as people first. Mm -hmm. um, and, and these clear guys are perfect examples of that, you know. Um, all three guys over 3.0 GPA. I think Martin's 4.0 GPA, wow. academic excellence. I mean, uh, and that's where it starts, honestly. It starts in the classroom first, right? And so um, just seeing the growth, I mean, it's not often we have young freshmen, sophomores lead our program as captains. And we've been blessed enough to have guys like Gabe and Martin come in and step in that role as sophomores and Kamoy. Kamoy just, you know, being named captain, I want to say it was his junior season, uh, midway through junior season. I mean, he just instantly set the tone uh, for this program. To get him back for a fifth year as our lone fifth year um, just excites us, to, you know, because it, it just it, it continues to allow us to stay consistent and true to our values and vision. And that's what all three of these guys bring. First, you know, it's first it's off the field. And then on the field, it's just the competitive drive. They do not allow any players to get complacent. And um, they hold each other accountable. You know, they're, they're great friends, they're great leaders, but they're not shy to hold each other accountable. And they're three of 12 returners that come back for the Saints team. And you also got 10 newcomers on this team. When you take a look at some of those newcomers that have come in, because I know you handle a lot of the recruiting also, so you are busy 24-7 every <laughs> single day of the year trying to get more team players to not only help you out on the field, but, I mean, you're all about wanting them to represent the school because in the NEI, it really comes with the student is over the 
actual athlete and student athlete. So tell us a little bit about some of the newcomers that really kind of intrigued you or that have really stepped it up so far as you kind of get yourself ready for that uh, for those for the regular season. Yeah, you know, one thing we strive within our program is the diversity of our programs, right, B- uh, both the men and the women. And I think that's what we continue to focus and strive on every year when we bring in a new rec- recruiting classes, the diversity of the program, embracing each other, learning about everybody's culture. And that's what we have with this year's class, right? We have a more diverse class coming in, um, which balances our team out, which, again, allows us to appreciate where everybody comes from, right? We talk about everybody having story, embrace that um, because if you're able to do that, you're able to just bond more on the field, right? And so with this class coming in, uh, you know, we, we brought in a couple transfers. We got Issa from uh, Trinidad, played at uh, Calumet. You got, you know, Armin as well, uh, goalkeeper from tr- tr- transfer from Trinity International. Um, these guys that have come in have instantly embraced and brought a culture that they believe in that's now lined up within our culture as well. And so some of these guys, you know, we, we've played one preseason game already against the defending national champions and um, who are a very good good team or, in my opinion, will make another run this year. And, and a lot of these guys have stepped up. You know, yeah, Issa, uh, the transfer, he, he's a very versatile player that can play multiple positions. We're really excited about him. Um, Anthony, you know, he, he's come in. Uh, with high expectations, and he's, he's he's not dropped the ball at all. I mean, he's come in um, and, and exceeded those expectations in the first week, so we're really excited about him. Uh, some local players, you know, Emin, this is a kid. Uh, we, we didn't know where he would fit in the team coming in, you know, this year. We didn't know if he would he would play much, uh, if, he, you know, he would be more of a reserve player. We were kind of going back and forth. We would see him on the pitch, and, and he, I would say, probably is one of the top players that have come into camp and really surprised us, right? And, and that's what you want as a coach. You want these kids putting in the work in the off season. You want freshmen coming in and making a statement. And uh, you know, some of those kids have really stood out. Um, I think another guy that's that's coming along quite well um, is Diego, and and he is someone that we think is going to help us tremendously this year in the center part of the pitch. So no, just a a little bit of uh, you know a little bit of. Um, What's the word I'm looking for here? Just a little bit of diversity, a little bit of different styles of play that mm-hmm. these guys are bringing to the to the field that is allowing us to uh, try new things. Um, and and the, the the number one thing for all these guys, they're all coming in with a winning mentality, and you need that. And uh, they all bring that to the table as well. You talked about it already, but in the CCAC, of course, the two big news that happened over this past summer, of course, Trinity International now moving to an online-only program, meaning that the athletics close, and then probably the biggest one, a, a team that is always near the top and has always been competitive, Cardinal Stritch. Very sad to hear that not just their athletics, but their entire university is going to be uh, closing and it is officially closed. And uh, and the big one is Viterbo now coming in, and that makes a huge difference because Cardinal Stritch was in that part, and would actually and Viterbo will be even further than that. So, what do you think about the changes and hearing about Cardinal Stritch and Trinity International essentially not going to be having soccer this upcoming season, then adding Viterbo into the conference? Just your initial thoughts when you hear that news. Yeah, you know it's 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 disappointing to see some of these schools closing. I mean, I got a lot of respect for both coaches right at trinity and 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 and, and uh, jamie at cardinal stretch and what those guys have done for their program is 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 tremendous you know stretch has been one of the top teams in the conference so you know as as, as one of the coaches you're kind of like okay you got him out of the <laughs> way but at the same time you never want to see that happen because uh they built something special at both those schools right and so uh, i i definitely feel bad for them and wish them both all the best as they continue their journeys in their life um Bringing in a team like Viterbo, they're going to be a similar to like a stretch. You know, they're they're going to come in and, and compete uh, right away from day one. So, you know, yes, we may lose a team like Stretch and Trinity that that battle us every game, but um, we're bringing in the team in our conference that, in my opinion, will will be a a, a conference uh, playoff team opponent. So, we're going to have to prepare for them just like we prepare for any other opponent. But um, you know, overall, I mean, it's uh, it's sad to see. Um, and I wish those guys all the best. And, and unfortunately, you know, we have to continue to move forward. Finally, we'll give you a wrap up here. Of course, as you'd already mentioned, you scrimmaged Bethel 1-1 tie. That's a really good result against a team that not only is were the national champions last year, but has uh, arguably the best player in soccer in Tim Noting. So good results still uh, to, to tie against the team. And Tiago's done an outstanding job with that program. So 
by the end of the season, you know, you'll also scrimmage Notre Dame here in just a little bit, and then you'll get ready for the regular season with teams like Aquinas, Indiana East, Goshen, Huntington Lawrence, and Marion, as well as Calvin, uh, before you get ready for uh, the conference play. What are your expectations from an individual standpoint for these players that to be set both on the field and off the field? And by the end of the day, what is Holy Cross's ultimate goal by the end of this regular season? I think every every coach, right, their ultimate goal is to win a championship, mm-hmm. right? And and at the same time, you have to be realistic, right, uh, with yourself, with the coaching staff, with your players. You have to set realistic goals. Um, big picture here, yes, all right, we have goals. We have goals to get to national tournament. We want to well, we want to be competing for a conference championship this year. I believe the guys um, are able to to do that, but at the same time, it's a process. Right, and and that's what we focus on the process um, here at Holy Cross, and you have to take one day at a time, one hour at a time, one minute at a time, and you you have to embrace those moments, and all you can focus on is in in, in measuring your team is is how how can you improve every day, you know, looking at the result against Bethel, quality team. I mean, they returned the front six. I mean, it, it, you know, they're 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 two guys up top, the four across the midfield line. They return all four, all six of those guys. So. It was a very competitive game. You know, last year, we unfortunately, we lost 6-1 to these guys. Mm-hmm. And, you know, to be down 1-0 and come back and tie 1-1, it speaks highly of, of our program. And I think as long as we continue to focus on the work, not necessarily the results and the rewards, those will eventually come. And I think that's uh, that's what I enjoy seeing in training, that these guys are really striving to focus on the work, not the result. And as long as they keep doing that, I think uh, – we could have a ph- phenomenal year. Well, Coach, thank you so much for your time, and we look forward to covering all of our Holy, the Holy Cross Saints men's games. As always, thank you for your time. Best of luck this season. Thank you. Once again, Coach Omar Gallo for the men's soccer team. We'll also have our women's media day, so you can check all these interviews out on our YouTube channel as well as our website at rrsn.com. And check out all of our Holy Cross Saints men's soccer coverage on our website at rrsn.com as well. We appreciate you coming and uh, tuning in for Holy Cross Men's Soccer Media Day here on the campus of Holy Cross College in Notre Dame, Indiana. This is Tanner Camp from the Regional Radio Sports Network. We thank you for tuning in.